All right, this is Ian and Abla, and we're back. Time to do a little bit of UV editing slash 3D coat UVs. <laughs> so what we're going to do is export this out again and go back into 3D coat. And this time we're just doing UVs. And this is probably one of my favorite parts because this means we're close to the end. <laughs> All right, so we, we know what this looks like. What I can do, you know, in the last video I said you didn't have to, but what we can do is because we are going to create this for games, um, we can maybe do every other one of these and get rid of some of these extra faces um, in there and definitely in here. Or you can leave them as is. Um, I'm going to go with the route of leaving them as is and worst case scenario, re UV before we paint. <laughs> if I dare say that. Um, let's go ahead and freeze transformation and delete all type by history. It's a super long name. But that's okay. We're going to export selected still because we don't want everything to go. We're going to call this full soda can OBJ. We're going to go into 3D coat, which still has our last mesh. We're going to import this for per pixel painting. So what we're basically telling 3D coat is, is uh, we want to paint this. And I found this is just the easiest way to tell UV, I mean, um, 3D coat. I want this done. <laughs> so we do the auto mapping, UV set name, we can call it full soda. Um, the texture width will go with the 2K texture. It's a soda can, it's not that serious. Now, the fun part about this is this, we're not, Actually, you know what? We can actually, because UVs were already done for us, we can actually start painting this from in here. As you can see, I just don't like painting in here. Um, I prefer, this is a great program, absolutely great program. Um, but I personally prefer to do um, painting in Mudbox. As you can see, we can paint here. If I go across the seams, you'll notice, whoa, where's that seam at? I, I'll, well, may, maybe it's because the UVs are straight up and down. Not the case. This is what 3D Coat does extremely well. Retopology and UV. As you can see, as I paint, you're not seeing any seams. And, you know, that's, that's just perfect. Everything was lined up the way it needed to be. So, as you can see, we can just go ahead and keep painting this bad boy. And we have our soda can. But what I really want to show you is the actual UVs. So let's go into our UV section. Did a pretty good job. So what we have is this basically this is broken down into four sections. And I'm talking about the main can. And as you can see, there's a little bit of weirdness going on here. And the reason for that is, is our scales of each one of these objects, just, it's a little tough. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to make a slight modification to these UVs. I'm going to delete this, delete that. And what I really want to do is have two halves. Whoa, come on, good job, all right? Wait, but nothing happened. What you're gonna to have to end up doing is update your shells, but I'm not done yet, so I don't wanna update this just yet. Now the reason for me splitting this up like this is, is I just want to make sure that um, later on when when we go to paint, I want to make sure it's easy to just plop our te texture here and plop it right here. I don't want to have four sections because then I can't come across it very well. So the other thing I want to do is, is I don't like having this opening down there. I would much rather have this thing as a solid piece. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete these portions, these seams. And this is just going to allow me to choose my own seams, which, you know, by all means, this, this auto seam, just like the auto retopology, does a great job. But you yourself have, have to understand what you're trying to accomplish and will those auto tools actually help you accomplish it. So I'm going to go ahead and create a seam for here and a seam for here. All right, so. This top portion, um, I don't care. <laughs> it's just not gonna have that much effect because we're not gonna we're gonna be painting this, but 
this area is where we need our soda can to be really good. So let's go ahead and unwrap this bad boy. It's gonna do its thing, it's gonna unwrap, and let's see what the our, our, our um, UVs look like after unwrapping. Woo! Look how fat these things are. <laughs> um, but you'll notice we still have these awkward colors. And um, what we can do if we want to, we can move around these all these shells. Um, we can flip, if we come down here into select it, we can flip it on the U's and the V. So if we want to have these two potentially um, right next to each other, we can do that. And if we want to, we can grab all the other stuff and move them up here so that we can easily just plop our, um, our work here. And actually pack UVs and it'll just take everything and just rearrange them. Um, and try to maximize as much space as possible. Whereas auto scale will automatically scale everything. Um, pack UV2 will rotate and do all that good stuff. And same thing, just trying to maximize uh, the amount of room used on this UV. Uh, you definitely want to do this for as many things as possible. In this case, we know that we're just doing this one shape. So we're not going to OD on it, but Let's go ahead and take a look at this. So this goes really high up. And we'll leave it. Okay, so I'm just zooming in. What I may want to do is, is grab these and bring them down. Ah, I'm going to leave it. We'll be able to bring it in and just eye it in Photoshop. It doesn't have to be vertical. And we can rotate um, in Photoshop now. Let's see if, if we flip this U, how will that work, actually? Nope, we don't want to scale this just yet. Oh, we have like these little pieces here that are just hiding. So let's take these pieces and let's just move them somewhere else because I don't want them there. So it does do a great job in trying to pack these UVs as, as best as possible. I personally just don't want those things to be there. You have to make sure that when you do move, oops, when you do move these, you want to make sure that you move them into an empty slot. You don't want to have UVs that are too close to each other. Um, and you don't want to have UVs sitting on top of each other because when you paint, all of a sudden you'll have, you'll start painting this and you'll start seeing, you know, that have that, that paint color on there. You don't want that. So we can move this slightly. But as you can see, this is so tight. I'm going to have to scale these in order to do that. So we can go ahead and scale this down. Oops, we don't want to scale that way. I'm going to slightly scale it. But as you see, as, as we scale it, the amount of space, you know, and the detail it can keep gets lower and lower. So you can move things around. You can do all that if you so wish to. But... What I want to do is do a quick auto scale instead, and that should even out some of those blue and red marks. Auto scale, let it pack the way it wants to. And what we want to do is, is relax this. You don't want to do too much relaxing because it does shift um, this just, a, just enough to be dangerous. So we relax it, and as you can see, that's you know it, we're not seeing those danger warning signs of things being stretched because that's what that is. That's things being stretched. That's fine. Nothing else to me needs to be updated. So I think we're good to go. So what I'm going to do now is is um, apply our UV set, and this is more or less confirming all the changes we just made. All right, so now it's applied. We can go ahead and take this and we can just export the model. Um, full soda can. See, you really don't want to do this. We'll call it final. Don't do what I just did. <laughs> All right, so now we're exporting this. We can export that lovely color map we just did, but we're not going to do that. 
um, because we're going to do that somewhere else. You have all this information. We don't have much displacement. Uh, actually, we did no displacement, so we're not going to do any of that. None of this is going to mean anything. We hit OK. And we just export that out. So now when we go back into Maya and we import, I open this up. Let's do this again for the umpteen time. I'm just going to move these over. So now when we import, we're going to look for a full soda can final. We're going to import that bad boy. And we're going to give you a new Lambert. Add a new material. Lambert. I'm going to call this soda can one. <laughs> Let's change this to full soda. Full soda can. And this just makes sure that they both share the same information. I don't want this to be on this side. So let's go ahead and grab this. Hit insert. Same thing as we did before. Bring this down. Oh, grabbing the top for this is, is proving to be a pain. So I'm just going to come in here and grab it. I'm going to hit insert. And come in here. Once again, bring it up. Just maximize real quick and zoom, make sure I'm in the right area. All right, perfect. So now that we have our UVs, we can double check. I'm going to Windows, UV Texture Editor. Ah, our UVs are here. All right, so now that we have UVs, now we can actually paint. We're not going to do a lot of painting, but we're going to do enough painting. And we're definitely going to open up our good old buddy Photoshop. So in the next video, I'm going to introduce you to another world, Mudbox, and a little bit of Photoshop. So, this is Edison Abelard. I'm out.